Jess here and welcome and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to share with you how to make a ruffle color blouse from a men's shirt. I'm really into vintage and corset style recently. You can see it in some of my previous DIYs. That's why I want to make this stuff right after I saw it pop up on my Instagram feed. I'm about to show you how I make it soon, but first, I want to share with you about our sponsor for today's video. It's Skillshare, an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and creative people. You can explore new skills, develop existing interests, and get a lot in creativity. If you're uncertain about what's next, creative challenges and productivity classes can be a great way to help you structure your time and set up achievable goals. At a time when so many important conversations are happening in our world, your voice is more essential than ever. Explore classes to unlock your creativity for so, so good. Skillshare offers membership with meaning, connect with the support of fellow creatives, and enter a community of encouragement, communication, and inspiration. Whether you're looking to fan up boredom, focus on self-care through creativity, or join a similarly creative community, Skillshare is the place to keep you learning. One of my biggest problems since I started my YouTube channel until now is my English. In the beginning, I wasn't confident to speak in front of the camera because of my bad English and strong accents. But I'm building up my confidence and now I'm here speaking to you in front of the camera even though my English is still not perfect. So if you're looking for some tip to build up your confidence, you can check out this card from Ajena Washington. She's a model, an actress, and an entrepreneur. The card is called Confidence for Creative. Find exercise to grow your confidence and self-care. One of her exercise that I found very practical is drawing a map of miracles. It helps you to put down your goal and three action needs with your support to achieve what you want in your life. And great news, if you are the first 1,000 people to use the link in my description, you will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. And after that, it's only around $10 a month. Now, let's start our DIY today. I use a double XL size men's shirt in white for this DIY. It has a very big sleeve, which is great to make the perfect for the sleeve later. The first step is removing the front pockets of the shirt. After that, I unsew the seam at the neck to over the back. At the shoulder line of the front shirt, I draw a new line at 3cm under it. After cutting, I draw a new shoulder line for the back at 2cm above the front shoulder line. Then connecting two new shoulder lines together and sewing. At the top of the sleeve, I'm making a loose seam foot. Then I create a ruffle there to make it fit to the wicks of the new sleeve. From the end of the sleeve, I draw a line at 28cm inside it. After that, I draw another line at 8cm from the first line. After cutting, I'm making a loose seam at the end of the new sleeve foot. Then I make the ruffle after that. Make sure the width of the ruffle in the end is around 24cm, which is the width of your arm plus 2cm. 
I'm using the fabric I cut from the old sleeve before to cut a rectangle with 26cm width to connect to the end of the new sleeve. After the first seam, I fold the end of the rectangle inside 1cm, then keep folding it over the first seam to hide all the extra fabric inside and making the second seam. From the neck of the shirt, I move down and mark at 44cm, which is the width from the neck to over the belly button. But make sure the leftover fabric of the shirt is big enough to make the collar later. At the back of the top, from two sides of the shoulder line, I move to inside 20cm which is the half width of the shoulder, then drawing a straight line from this mat down to the end of the top. After cutting, I connect two lines together. At the end of the shoulder line, I mark at 10cm inside, so it will be the width of the top I want. After that, I check the width of the red shoulder line to draw the new neckline for the blouse. To draw the neckline for the back of the blouse, I use the back neckline of the main shirt. After cutting, mark at the front neckline where is the middle of the back neckline, then removing the button and old button holes of the main shirt. Fold the neck of the blouse in half at the middle of the back neckline, then using the leftover fabric of the main shirt to create the collar. Fold the leftover fabric in half first, then apply the neck of the blouse and draw the curved line of the neck. From the curved line, I draw another curved line outside with 11cm, so the width of my collar will be 11cm, making two pieces like this for the collar.
to create a ruffle. I cut along rectangles with around 6cm width and the lens is as long as I can. At one length line of the rectangle, I fold the end fabric inside two times, then sew in. After that, I make a loose seam at the other end to create a ruffle. Make sure the length of the ruffle has to be the same with the length of the collar. Now, I'm connecting the ruffle to the collar, then sewing. A tip here for you that you can connect the ruffle to one piece of the collar first, then connecting it to the other piece later. It will help your sewing easier. After upside the collar, use the iron to make it snide. I connect the middle of the collar to the middle of the neck at the back foot, then connecting the rest later. At the beginning of the next line, fold the extra fabric inside to create a button area for the blouse later. I use a long fabric line with 3cm width to connect to the neckline and sewing. After the first seam, I fold the long fabric line inside to hide on the seam and make the second seam to finish the neck. Now, I'm turning the beginning of the neckline outside and folding the rest of it to create a new button and buttonhole area. At the end of the blouse, I fold the end fabric inside two times and sew to finish it. The last step is installing the buttons and making the new button hole. And I finished this DIY. Here's my final transformation. This top is just so vintage and classic. I hope you will try it out. See you next week.